We were intimidated, cajoled, and battered until we finally relented. We saw Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. So you know what that means. Now it's time for Hello, people of Earth, and welcome to How Did This Get Made? I am Tall John Shear, and today we are talking about Transformers 2 Revenge of the Fallen. Man, oh man, this is a long fucking movie. So so long. Um, why, why are we doing this? This is not a movie we would normally do on the show. Uh, we're doing it because for the last two years, we were harassed uh, by two people posing as Michael Bay, uh, sending us hundreds of DVDs over the course of two years. They've shown up at live shows. We would be in the lobby of theaters and people would be dressed up as Transformers. They left gifts for us on stage. They transferred DVDs to VHSs. They went above and beyond to get our attention to do this movie, and we are doing it for them. Uh, And I want to say very cleanly and clearly, uh, just because they did it doesn't mean that we'll ever do this again. I just really enjoyed these uh, these two gentlemen and how they took something that could be creepy and made it actually really fun. And uh, so that's why we're here. Uh, I didn't want to be here. I saw this movie in the theater. (laughs) And I did not want to watch it again. But uh, here to help me break down this entirely confounding film uh, is my co-host, Mr. Jason Manzoukas. Welcome, Jason. Uh, (laughs) That's my transforming (laughs) sound. Transforming into my human self, my podcast host self. Um, uh, I'm okay, Paul. Uh, I will say last night when I put this movie on to watch it, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to fucking blast this out. Yeah. You know, uh, this is going to be great. Nope. Uh, I turned it on <laughs> no. HBO Max, two mm-hmm. and a half hour runtime. Yep. I almost, again, the quarantine is wreaking havoc with my emotional well being. I almost started to cry. I was, I was <laughs> devastated to find that this movie was going to be the majority of my night was going to be spent. And then because I kept having to pause because it was so bad, right. it took me, I'm going to say, four hours yeah, to is, watch this movie. We uh, we watched it in one chunk, and I'm really appreciative of that. I offered to June to watch it over two nights, and she smartly uh, said, no, well, we'll do it one night. it's interesting because I was... On Sunday night, Paul said, we have to watch the movie tonight. And I said, well, but aren't we recording on Tuesday? I kind of want to keep it fresh. And he said, no, we're going to need, believe me, we're going to need two <laughs> oh, nights. And I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. I think I'll, I think it'll actually be harder to do it in two seconds. I would rather end the podcast. It, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I just don't think that's going to work. So I said, now listen to what we had to do. I had to call in reinforcements and have Paul's mom yeah. come over and watch the children because I was so nervous that if we were to put it on at night that I would in revolt just fall asleep. So I oh, knew oh, I see. Do you know what I, I thought mean? you meant that you yeah. might just like leave the house and well, never come back. No, no, I, so, I knew that this movie had the potential to put June to sleep. By the way, uh, please welcome June. Uh, oh, Rachel. I'm so how, sorry. No, I how are you, Paul? June? I'm great. How are you? Very good. Um, <laughs> Can I say you, one more thing, yeah, Paul? Yeah, please continue. So I then had to have, I had to pick up Paul's mother and say, um, and she said, I said, we have to work. And she said, oh, okay. I said, thank you so much for coming over in the middle of the day to watch the kids. And it was so strange to have to explain to her, we are watching, <laughs> we have to go upstairs <laughs> and watch a two and a half hour movie and cannot be interrupted because if we are, we'll never come back to this. We you know never. that your mother-in-law 100% thinks you guys had some sort of afternoon sex I know. Day. I know. Like, it's nothing more clear to her than like, oh, I guess this is what's happening I now. know. And like, that is, we have to go upstairs and watch a movie. <laughs> Don't let the kids come in. We cannot be interrupted. <laughs> we can't be interrupted for this Transformers movie we have to watch. Is that right, Paul? Yeah, it's rough. June, can you also just let Jason know? June was asking me before we watched it. She's like, what is this movie that we're watching? And whenever June asks me that, I like to just uh, say, wait for it. And what was your first reaction? Do you remember? I think it was when you saw 
Hasbro pop up on the screen. Oh, so when I saw Hasbro, because I remember Hasbro from, I mean, I think Hasbro also made Barbie dolls and all sorts of different toys. And I said, wait, Hasbro, so is this, did the toys come first and then they built a world around these toys? Or was there a world and a series that then the toys came from? Well, I mean, so oh, yeah. that's interesting. So, June, are you okay? Oh, wow. So, June, are you not aware of the kids' Transformers cartoon from our childhood? I think I must have. I, uh, I which is, it I mean, kind which of would, familiar, but yeah, okay. So, so yeah, Transformers was a was a toy line okay. when I was a kid, even yeah. you know, and was a was a kids. I was a like Go-Bot Saturday guy. morning type cartoon, a la GI Joe yeah. or Voltron oh, okay. or any of those similarly timed uh, shows. There was a Transformers cartoon that was on for years. That gotcha. Me- that many of the Transformer characters in this movie a- appear in, but none of the human characters do. Basically, it was a toy that became a comic book, and the comic book became a cartoon. So and it did start off as a toy. Yes, this was in the part of the uh, in a part of the eighties where they would try to launch. A, you know, a universe around a toy. So then you would go back and buy more toys. I mean, they still We've do done, it. We, we did Masters of the Universe on this show, and that is similarly, they yes. created toys, He-Man yeah. uh, and all those characters. They created the toys first and then yeah. reverse engineered a cartoon to sell it's those It's sort toys. of like what happened like in the early 2000s with like Twitter handles, like shit my dad says when they would try to create like full... Oh, yeah. TV good way of shows. Looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I will also say that Transformers has a, a big, you know, pop culture lore. They made a movie about it. People love Transformers. And then Michael Bay came in and Michael Bay was like, I'm going to do it the Michael Bay way. And I will tell you all this. Um, there are. Wasn't it originally supposed to be Steven Spielberg making these movies? Yes, uh, that is true. Uh, and then I think that was a development process that didn't quite work. And yeah. then Michael Bay took over. But then there is like a great quote from Michael Bay, which I really love. I was going to say this to the end, but basically Michael Bay like showed it to Steven Spielberg and Steven Spielberg, this movie in particular. Uh, and Steven Spielberg said, this is fucking awesome. And Michael <laughs> Bay is so proud of the fact that he could make Steven Spielberg curse. Wow. So Spielberg was all in on this film. Now, I will tell you who else has been all in on this film. Me, Mr. Paul Shear. There are six Transformers films, five in the franchise, and one being Bumblebee, a spinoff. How many have I seen in the theater? Anyone want to take a guess? Anyone want to take a guess of the... My guess is all of them. Yeah, all six. Five. Seen five wow. of the six. What? In the theater. And Which I get, one did you not see? I didn't see the one with the dinosaurs. Uh, the... Uh, the Age of Extinction. Oh, the Dinobots? The Dinobots. I did not see the Dinobots movie. Um, I will tell you why. I fall victim to this all the fucking time. I'm like, you know what? They figured it out. I'm going back in. One, what? I did see for charity. <laughs> one, I saw for charity. One, uh, the one with Anthony. What do you Anthony, mean you saw for charity? Uh, for Anthony Hopkins. There's the Anthony Hopkins episode uh, or the movie. Uh, and for Slash Film, they, wrote, they raised money for the LA's Children's Hospital. Oh, okay. So I, I watched it. Uh, to talk about it on their podcast, which was raising money for the L.A. Children's Hospital. Um, and then Bumblebee is actually great. Bumblebee is great. I've See seen Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Uh, Haley Steinfeld uh, uh, in, in that movie is terrific. And it is like that is to me a version of these movies that I understand. Yes. It makes because it's sense. primarily like a story about her and her kind of awkward high school years, and then Bumblebee plays like a part in it, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, Versus it's, yeah. this nonsense, Who's which Bumblebee? was Bumblebee, Bumblebee is, the, is car. the yellow car. Oh, okay. Bumblebee the is the yellow car. Who in the in the Bumblebee movie? It, it's just a, it's a better setup for success. It's this smaller. Is it's smaller. Chaos. Yeah. I mean, this is insane. And I'll also give you another big reveal right at the top. I auditioned to be Shia's roommate in this film and wanted what? it really badly. Yes. Uh, so what? Jonah, yeah, so Jonah Hill was supposed to be the roommate, and then he dropped out of the movie. Like they had already offered it to him. He was gonna do it. He dropped out. And then they were looking for a comedy guy to play off of Shia in this film. And at this point, I'm already a balding man. 
Uh, this is only in uh, 2009. So it's 10 years yeah. ago. And, uh, and they're like, you'll be his college roommate. And I remember saying to my agent, <laughs> well, there's no way. I mean, like, how? And they're like, no, they want you to go in. I had two or maybe even three auditions for this. I came Whoa. slightly. I'm I mean, I could remembering have... this. Were we together yeah. at this point? We were together at this point. Um, we and so were we together, June. We've been together for like <laughs> <laughs> it's casting probably 2008. Yeah, I yeah, would we guess. were together. Yeah, yeah, and it was like I was so excited about it, and they let me improvise, and there was all this sort of stuff, and I was just I couldn't wrap my head around it. And I was like, what, what is going on? Um, but uh, <laughs> you were yeah, so to the, play a freshman in college. Yep, I mean, <laughs> it didn't make sense. <laughs> Did, and, and I, like, <laughs> somehow that never happens to me. I'm all, if, like anything, 30, I'm like, I was 30 years old. <laughs> if anything, I'm like, wait, why am I auditioning to play the character who's 59? Oh, please. <laughs> me too. I've been like playing the mother of like an 18 year old for, you know, since I was 22. <laughs> um, so anyway, I was very excited about this movie and I was very upset to see who they did cast because they didn't go with comedy at all. Oh, I, I mean, disagree. Are you kidding? So I'm going to say Leo. hilarious. I oh, thought he did yeah. a good job. I actually, so uh, listen, there's so much that's so baffling about this movie. And you oh. know, we talked a bit about it in the interview, but I'll say it again. This movie just makes me wonder, are men okay? Are they okay? <laughs> are they doing all right? Are the men okay? Because this is uh, such a strange tale but yeah and so sort of ridiculous but i did think that the performances in this movie were energized and um uh fun i will say this i agree with you wholeheartedly uh june especially i will say shia labeouf who yes. i think is a fantastic, fantastic actor I think without Shia LaBeouf, and then even more importantly, without Julie White and Kevin Dunn, oh, who play the pair, they are amazing. They Wonderful. are keeping this movie alive and grounded emotionally in a way that has it kind of at least touch it, touch the base of yes. what is going on in most tracking any of like when when it looks like Shia is going to die or when he's going to go off and do the mission alone. His parents' emotional reaction is. They are shattered. They are devastated. And you read that off of them in a way that none of the actors are belying any emotional import to the stakes of what they're doing, the choices that they're making. And Julie White and Kevin Dunn are there every step of the way to be to to give the audience emotional cues to understand there are emotions at play. Okay, when and, Julie yes. White, when Julie White <laughs> has the little baby shoes wrapped around her neck like a necklace, I was crying. It was she is hilarious in oh, this Oh, when movie. she gets stoned? Oh, it, it, when she gets yeah. stoned, so it's a masterclass of physical yes. comedy. All I'm going to say is this. Agreed. This is why I saw five out of six yeah, in no, the I theater. That. Because there are elements. I'm going to say a big thing. I love Michael Bay movies. I don't love Transformer movies at all. Like, I saw five out of six. I don't like them except for Bumblebee. Uh, and, I, and I learned that lesson five times. Um, but I will say this. Man, oh, Fucking man, I think Michael Bay knows comedy on some level. When you look at his okay. people in, uh, here's what I'll say. When you look at the people that he has That's a in his quote, movies, Paul. Michael Bay knows comedy. Because when you look at the people that he has in his movies, they're always like, whether it's Gerard Carmichael, whether it's, uh, you know, Cordry, whether it's, you know, uh, Julie White and Kevin Dunn, like he does cast really funny people. Like he does let them do their own thing. And I'm, and that to me and is really kind I, of surprising. I agree with I agree with you both in the sense that like they cast towards people who can sell comedy. Right. Uh, but who are also good actors. All the people you mentioned are terrific actors. And these movies reach for, and whether they land or not, jokes. You yeah. know, like there are there there is attempts at physical comedy there's attempts at you know like even like and i think i've only seen one other transformers movie and it was the one the first one right right and which has the physical comedy beat of bumblebee trying to hide behind things a giant yeah building size robot trying to hide behind small things and it's a funny like comedy bit like there's there, i understand that he's and, and i here's my full disclosure paul you auditioned for this movie 
I didn't for this movie, but I did a day of comedy punch up on Whoa. Transformers. Wow. Mark Wahlberg uh, Transformers. So when I don't you know call, it, you say Michael Bay knows comedy. You didn't know that it was actually Jason Mansukas <laughs> and but, Michael Bay know comedy. But by the way, I'm going to say that Michael Bay knows Jason Mansukas. So I'm feeling like right. he is putting together. Like, now I, listen, I have not been asked to take part uh, either as an actress, either as a writer in any Michael Bay movies. And that's my main critique of of. Well, I don't really know all of them, but Transformers, there are no women in these movies. I mean, I kept on looking at all of those military people who were all white men. There's Julie White and there's Megan Fox and that other... Baby um, Megan Fox. Yes. Yes. Uh, That is uh, is it. And it's so shocking because it's like there's not even any other... There are tons of other characters. There's not a single other woman in the movie who has a line. It's crazy. Yeah. And sometimes uh, I will say, and I like Megan Fox in this film as well. Like Megan Fox is just standing there for a lot of group scenes. Like there's like, one time I was like, wow, I don't think she's spoken in three scenes in a row. She's just her body. She, her body is there. But uh, but that's all because she is training a robot. But I agree with you, June. Like <laughs> there's a couple of things here. <laughs> I mean, there are, let me be very clear, there are wildly problematic things oh. throughout this movie from front to back. Like, yes. Tip to tail. There is, we, tip to tail is, uh, I'm certain, by the way, how uh, Michael Bay shoots movies. Start at the tip, end at the tail. Um, <laughs> and it is, there is problematic stuff on a race level. There's problematic oh, stuff yes. gender-wise. There's prob- I mean, there is stuff throughout this movie that is... Like Red Flag City. I, so, I want to make sure that people know that I'm not saying that Michael Bay knows comedy when I'm talking about Skids and Mudflap, uh, the, uh, those you. characters. Yeah, because I, I just think he has a good taste in actors. I uh, do, too. And I yeah. think he has a good um, sense of like pacing dialogue. There is a zippiness to the scenes. There's too many of them, and it yeah. goes on forever. But he does keep that pace up. It's the thing that makes because I also like Michael Bay. Let me be very clear. Oh yeah, I like Michael Bay. Like inside of like, which is why these movies are so disappointing because it's oftentimes all about CGI, like transforming nonsense for kids versus something like Bad Boys. Like the ba- right. like when you when it's Michael Bay, you know that Michael Bay's action is called Bayhem. Mm-hmm. Do you know this? It's <laughs> no, it's a re- it's like that. what they refer to his style as Bayhem. <laughs> Um, okay. His style, when you put um, Martin Lawrence and Will Smith at the center of it, is it's exciting to yep. watch. Yep, absolutely. Fun. But the other side of it is in when you put like that cast of Pearl Harbor together, it's a snore fest. Like in yes. this movie, kind of walks that middle that middle road, which is like it has elements of like a movie like The Rock, but it also has the drama that he wants to sometimes go after in like the movies like Pearl Harbor. But this but, is the interesting yeah. thing about like, OK, so I did think Shia was incredible, by the way. And, you know, not to brag, but Paul and I did go to a gym that he frequented and worked out in jeans and boots and like sweaters cowboy and boots, never babe. seemed to cowboy, cowboy boots. boots never seemed to change into workout gear. Um, but so I thought he was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> My understanding was that he was doing um he was wearing workout gear in the real world and working out in real world. He was doing a reverse. It always looked like he was just like happened to be driving by and like ran in to get a yeah. quick workout. In. Like, he's like, like, he's like, oh, fuck, I can get some reps. In. But yeah. watching somebody push weights like what, you know, I don't know what that thing is where you push lay down. Weights. Like when you're laying down on your back and you're using oh. your legs to like push up a weight. Like a, uh, like a leg press. Like a leg press to see somebody in cowboy boots doing that. I, it is one of the memories that has burnt oh, into my head. Oh, I'll be with that head. one forever, forever. Yeah, I mean, it really was a bizarre image. Cowboy I used boots. to go to a gym in Brooklyn when I lived in Brooklyn that had a, had posted signs above the treadmills that said, no work boots on treadmills. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Which means it must have been happening enough. In Brooklyn. Yes, it, it was. It must have been happening often enough, or it was for just one person, and they were like, well, let's try and make it seem like it happens more. <laughs> no mustache greasing while on treadmills. Well, okay, uh, so here's the thing. And by the way, will we ever go into gyms again? 
I don't oh, think no. so. I hope not. Some I'm, people are. Some people are. Not. They have that like little like boy in the bubble gyms now where you can go into like a little pod. Listen, like, I yeah. saw Jane Fonda post the other day that she yeah. was at a gym all by herself. What? Oh, no. Jason, don't get me started. What is she? It's you, insane. Tell her to call me. I'm I'll talk so her down. So by the way, our, good, our good friend Carl Tart uh, is at the gym. He's working out at the gym. What? Oh my God, guys! What um, are you doing? I mean, I Buy don't a love a rope. gym. I don't love a gym in, in the best of times. I, there's no way I'm going in in the worst of times. You know the gym that I like to go to, June, and you, I, I could never go there. That place is the gonna kissing be gym. The kissing gym. That yeah, you have to <laughs> lick the door to get into the. That's how the door opens. It's You're not tongue. talking about that gym. The gym. You're not talking about that gym by us. Yeah, exactly. Which was basically like where coronavirus started. Yeah, that that is a, that's a rough. Gym. That's it's a the, the gym by you is a. Is a lab in China? Yes. That is the uh, that's the epicenter. <laughs> oh my god! Well, that gym is the worst. <laughs> so anyway, what I was going to say about Shia though <laughs> is, um, I thought his performance was incredible, but I didn't. I mean, I don't even know why we're talking about like why I dare to talk about the narrative, but the whole his journey of not being able to say I love you mm. felt really off to me. He comes across in the beginning as a sweet, well-meaning, um, adjusted, excited college student um, who should should count his lucky stars that Megan Fox is giving him the time of day. And it just never felt like he would actually struggle to tell this woman he loves her. So you think you can make it through these East Coast winters without me? You're like the best thing that ever happened to me. And? And I'll do anything for you. And? I think Sam's about to say the L word. Let's go, kiddo. Nice timing, Dad. I adore you. That's not the word that I want to hear. What are you talking about? It's the same word as the other word. It's not the same word. Look, if I say the other word now and you force me to say it, it won't mean anything. Plus, you haven't said it either, so don't get mad at me for not saying it. Yeah, but I haven't said it because guys always run when you say it first. Yeah, well, so do girls. Especially girls like you with options. So, this is all part of your elaborate plan to keep me interested? It can be. I hate that it's working. Can I have a kiss? We're gonna make it work, I promise. So, like, yeah, he was holding it back because he wanted to keep her on the hook. But then um. he seems to go to that party with no no uh, sense of time. Like, he's supposed that, to get on a... That frat party, This the depiction oh of my college in this movie... <laughs> this, this is what I love about Michael Bay movies, is Michael Bay's... What Michael Bay thinks college is like, what Michael Bay thinks, like, all of these normal things are like... When 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 it's the other thing is like when like the, when Shia's roommate is like you're poor I'm poor I've seen where Shia grew up that doesn't look like he's poor no but but like not at on. all that, that frat but to party, Michael Bay that looks poor that frat party was half like a Miami club from Bad Boys and then oddly like a birthday cake. On a table oh, yeah. in yeah. the middle, like there's but a like like why is there a birthday but cake here? Twenty five grand of lighting, yeah. You it's know, so like, strange. Like, I mean, even before he goes to the frat party, when he's in his dorm room and gets pulled oh, no. into that yes. like tech den, um, the, I, I could not get over the pictures on the wall. So there are all these pictures of women. Young, like, I guess that they're working on a website called, like, the Hot Freshman or the Freshman 53 well, or something. Wasn't it, like, fuck that, like, FTJ, right? It was, I forget what that stood for. Like, he was... Fuel the Jet. Yeah, Fuel the Jet. That was his website. So I think it was, like... This oh, no, where... Fuel the Jet was what he says to do. The website oh, okay. was... um The Freshman uh. 50... Yeah, he's, oh, okay. he's basically creating a website that will cull through all the oh, po- pictures. Right. It's yes. like it's basically trying to Facebook. it's trying to do a Facebook but, riff. But okay, so but the pictures themselves are all like headshots of women with in the same background, as though they all like went to Sears. <laughs> and got yeah. these shots together. They don't look different enough on the wall. I've looked at this picture because Avril, who also watched this movie begrudgingly, uh, sent that image. And oh, when you did. look at that image, not only are you distracted by the giant Mountain Dew machine, which is in <laughs> the film. Like, in this movie, the room. This movie. I'm sorry. The ju- full-size Mountain Dew machine is in their dorm room. By the way, it seems like Shia has... Like, that's the sweet part, uh, like, sweet, like, S-U-I-T-E part of his room, because 
they didn't seem to like go to another room. It seems like, oh yeah, that's my computer the layer. The college dorm room is arguably 3,600 square feet. Yes, I it's never had enormous. an apartment in New York City that was as big as their college dorm room. The footprint of that dorm room, it had four people living in it, a complete hacker's rig in one room, plus a mountain, a full-size Mountain Dew machine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was I didn't get it. I couldn't make heads or tails of the layout. By the way, uh, until 2011, this film held the record for the highest number of paid product placements at 47. 47. Wow. Well, they didn't really work because the only thing I remember is that Mountain Dew machine. I mean, me too. I think a lot of the cars. That's probably a lot of cars. Oh, okay. in there. Yeah. Wait, so um, what did really... Avril say about those photos? Paul? Uh, no, when you look at them and you really look at them, they almost look like they're the same person woman like it, it looks so like it, it looks like a myth it looks like a, a like did you say this June? like they're they're missing like a missing poster yes like that there's kind, something yeah. very creepy about them um yeah. it, a, and at first i thought like oh he's walked into this strange like sex trafficking yeah ring um yeah it was it was very very odd so then so then they're starting a website called the hot F- freshman 55 but then they are also have a website about Aliens, right? Because he they've got a website. Yeah, he he has a website that basically kind of puts out that felt to me like you know like puts out weird videos from the internet and tries to like like push like almost like um not like a TMZ but like but like, he's like the alien TMZ because he was like oh damn they scooped us again like they got us like we had this alien thing by the way the alien thing that happens in the beginning which is all the Transformers takes place in Shanghai and this is at that point in American cinema where every big blockbuster film had like and now we're in Shanghai for a beat like Iron Man goes to Shanghai for a couple minutes and you have a couple of uh, actors in there that are from that country that are allowed to kind of be present but yeah that was so bizarre it's all in Shanghai they blow up the entire city and how are they gonna keep that quiet like how would they ever keep that quiet the civilian deaths in this movie are staggering when you look at how they are so they are so casual in how much destruction and devastation the Transformers cause when they are, you know, like when 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 in Captain America Civil War, when they when the Avengers square off against each other, it's in an empty airport, right? right? They're doing stuff, but nobody gets hurt. We, in this movie, from the beginning, to, like when they sink, they sink an aircraft carrier just casually at one point. There's like 5,000 people on an aircraft. Carrier. Nothing like, nothing makes sense in this movie as far as death because you don't even, you have no connection to it. Like just things are, bu- randomly, things are just blowing I up. I would like to see a small family drama about people who are driving to like a, a like for a vacation with their kid, a hard one vacation. Transformer battle takes place and they are somehow thrown off course and have to deal with the results. Like the resulting chaos of having been in and around any major, yeah. every every continent in this movie has a catastrophic Transformers event to the with a death toll of tens, if not hundreds of thousands. And everyone in the world would know about Transformers. And this brings me to my first big point that I want to bring up, which is this. We are introduced to Nest, right? Which is the... Oh, Transformers, God. like they are, they're fighting against Decepticons. These are the Autobots fighting against Decepticons. But why do this we? This is the military. This the is, military. So the movie is split. For most of the movie, the movie is structured like a like an improv Harold. You know, it's three <laughs> yeah. disparate storylines, um, a family comedy with the Wit Wiki family sending Sam off That's to college. That's I liked. I like that. I too. liked that as well. Uh, a military sh- movie starring Josh Duhamel and Tyrese. Like. Oh, thank you. Uh, with, uh, uh, and they're teamed up with the Autobots. And that and, little nerdy guy from the government. Now, oh, how dare you, yes. Optimus Prime? By the way, when yeah, he had to exactly. climb up the staircase to yell at Optimus Prime, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. And then, <laughs> and then we also are inside of the the alien drama unfolding which is because we all that i could have done without (laughs) oh my god then we have multiple scenes that are just about we go to cybertron we go to like all we we go to the pet we go to we go to when fucking transformers meet prehistoric man so there's a whole third uh storyline that is just transformers alone i do think that that actually was better than 2001 
that. I mean, I will say that, but when you look at it, two thousand the, the Stanley Kubrick. Movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think this is a better telling of how man evolved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> just because it looked cooler, it looked a lot cooler. The, yeah. So for you, for you, you don't care about the monolith and its import in in transforming uh, prehistoric man into the human beings we are now. For you, it's all about the fallen and what they did. Yeah. Look, that's just me. Call me crazy. I mean, I, I was on I was on board. Uh, I mean, listen, imagine my surprise when I realized that these things were aliens. Yeah. <laughs> well, by the way, I didn't even understand. Like when he touches but that like, all spark and then it goes through the floor, then the whole kitchen becomes Transformers. That I didn't understand. And then they have and guns. And also if the all spark goes through the floor, why does it stay on the kitchen island? Why does it just keep burning straight through the earth? But where did they get these bullets? All of a sudden, they're shooting machine guns in his house. And then uh, Julie White coming down to leave. What is the toaster or the blender using as a a, a projectile? You know, I I didn't understand any of that. I didn't understand any of that. And I also don't understand, let's say, for sake of argument, that Cybertron had, had had not been destroyed and the Transformers never left and they were living lives, uh, content lives on Cybertron. Would Optimus Prime still be transforming into an 18-wheeler? Would he still be transforming into mm. a, a, a car I, yeah. that was created on Earth in the middle part of the last century? Well, like, what, what, what is this? I think that that's them blending in... Because I mean, this is where I don't really know the mythology of the of the movie, and I like, should what because what form do they take if they are not in these cars, or can they and, only and, be if they are in a um, something that has like a power source to it? And if they are able to choose, you know what I mean? Like if if Optimus Prime is like, well, I need to blend in here on Earth, I might as well be an eighteen wheeler. Fine. Could he also choose? I want to be a a jet. Well, can he also choose? I want to be a, like. What are the rules? Which is also like I couldn't understand. What is there? Because they play this over and over again. Because they kill so many transformers. What is their anatomy? If you stab a transformer, do you have to stab it in the engine? Well, do you like, have to stab like, it he, in the. What no is idea. the death? They do a face rip in the movie. Like they rip off a transformer's face. I'm like, well, who cares? He's a robot. Like, does that hurt him? And like they stab. Like at one point, the transformers also have swords. They stab him through. And it's like, well, that's like a. So they stab Optimus through the stomach, but it's like, he doesn't have like a stomach. He doesn't have guts. He doesn't yeah. have a, you know, like what's the, I don't understand what's the harm in that. Well, which brings me back to my point of <sighs> with Nest, like why does Nest even need military men around them? Just send the fucking robots in. Robots fighting fucking robots. Like why do the, why do the military That's- guys have to be like, I got to fire my gun too? Because these guys are shooting blasts that are blowing up sides of buildings. Like, what are these guys going to do? What, I mean, like, the idea that guys are out there with, like, like I'm assuming standard issue, like, machine guns shooting bullets at, like, robots from outer space is just, you just are asking for all these guys to get wiped out. I don't get it. And also... <laughs> by Why the way, robots any- with guns, by the way, is funny to me. Like, robots with guns and swords is making me laugh. Like, I'm not... I'm yes, I am 80 feet tall and I am the size of two buildings, but I do need a weapon equal to my size. <laughs> I, don't know why, I don't know why. Like I was just watching this, like this is so silly robots <laughs> with guns. Well, that's the interesting thing about and that's why I was saying when I, I was saying this, this, this whole entire movie and franchise to me is just such a it's just such a, a terrible testament to masculinity <laughs> because the fact that humans are um fighting next to these robots and and think that on any level these men could be partners <laughs> is so bananas <laughs> uh, it's so it's i mean this movie also does something that i've never seen a movie do which is you have a giant exposition dump at the top of the film like <laughs> this is the world that we are living in and this is the problem and then about an hour into the movie, another giant, like, if you thought that was the world, this is actually the world. And then he explains an even more complicated backstory. You see, in the beginning, there were seven primes, our original leaders, and they set out into the universe seeking distant suns to harvest. The primes set out with one rule, never destroy a planet with life. Until one of them tried to defy this rule, and his name forevermore was The Fallen. He despised the human race. 
and he wanted to kill you all by turning on that machine. The reason it's two and a half hours long is because the first, basically the first act and the se- first half of the second act seek to tell independent storylines for every major character. So every hu- every major human character gets their own storyline. Only at the very end of the movie do they start collapsing onto each other such that they are in the same place and time. Versus for most of the movie, you're jumping all over the globe where with Josh Dumel and the military guys, they're fighting a, a Decepticon in Shanghai. Now we're sending Sam Witwicky off to college. Now he's at a frat party, but also we are with Megan Fox at her house because her dad just got out of prison oh and boy. now she's got a transformer. She's, oh yeah. Also, she also has a piece. She also has a shard. Like no, she got the shard the from same him. One. He right, gave but her the there's shard. also the shard. There's also the shard that's in the thing that's called the that's gets so wonderfully monikered that I wrote it down and and such that I kept writing it down. And I was like, I can't believe this thing is actually called this. It's so predict. It's so insane. It's called the Matrix of Leadership. Oh my! Like gosh. they need to find the Matrix of Leadership. That's fucking crazy. And then at the end, it's like, well, you, well, when Shia dies, he goes to robot heaven. Oh, right. Yes. He goes, yes. To, he goes to robot heaven. <laughs> and then the robots come and say, hey, guess what? You're worthy to be one of us. So now we can make you whole again. He basically, it's basically like the King's Cross scene from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows where where he dies, confronts Dumbledore and decides he's going to go back right. and not, he's not going to move on. He's going to go back. But and the be robots like, like brought him into this world, but the robots can't like repair human tissue, but I guess the matrix of leadership can. And meanwhile, John Turturro's fucking climbing uh, oh, a pyramid. Dude, Turturro is fucking crushing it in oh, this movie. He gets he's crazier got a line. in the next films. Oh, really? Oh, He's got like a-, a line that I recorded on my phone because it made me laugh so hard. Oh, I can't wait for this. Let's not get episodic, okay? Old timer? Beginning, middle, end. Facts, details, condense, plot, tell it. <laughs> That's his line is his line says what he what the movie needs at that time. Does it fact? Let's not get episodic. It's so crazy. Beginning, middle, end, facts, details, condense, <laughs> plot. Tell it. These are notes to the movie inside of the movie. Like, I feel like somebody wrote those notes in the script. Like, we got to trim this. We got to condense. We got to fact. And John Turturro was like, you know what? I'm just going to say that. Just so you know, this movie was written in three weeks because of the writer's strike and they handed it in at midnight of the writer's strike. So wow. there is um, some issues well, there is with that. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for three weeks, uh, not a great bad. movie, a great movie for three weeks. Uh, surprise. They got it to be as long as they did. John Turturro and the jockstrap. That is a, a piece of comedy in the movie that I wasn't expecting. And was Megan Fox changing his pants for him? Oh, I hope not. She seems to, when he gets pantsed up afterwards, she seems to have been helping. Him. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh, um, by the way, but Megan Fox also wear, wearing, a, changing also at weird times too. Like she gets changed into like a bride's outfit early on in the film. Megan likes that- to change midway through. I couldn't understand why she wore, like, changed into a bride's outfit with a bouquet. Like, as if sending him off to college was, like, their wedding? I, 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 I couldn't figure that, that out. I that she wanted some sort of a commitment and wanted to dress for that. But that was so strange because she didn't seem like that type of gal. <laughs> Agree. She didn't you seem know? like a girl that wanted to settle down and get married at however old she is, which I'm imagining the movie says that she's like 19. I mean, the she's movie is just older. so... And, and does she is she not going to college? That's not even in the cards. No, she's staying home and working at the garage because her dad just got out of prison and she's keeping an eye on him. Okay. And this so this whole thing started because that little thing fell out of Shia's sweatshirt? Yes, which is so... Yeah. Which is so clumsily which is written. from the first so movie. It is, it is so... It's like... At, Which he's is on the, the first phone. because that's the sweatshirt he's wearing I in the got first that. I mean, but that but it's such a crazy, weird thing. Big, oh yeah, let me look at the old sweatshirt. Oh, and this piece got on me from the first movie. And like it's so like I was like, this is 
you're really reaching for some, I mean, some sort of like, how do you get him back in the story? Because well, it's, oh gosh, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so much that's so strange. I know we just t- touched on like how these, these machines and, and Decepticons and automatons or whatever they're called, like how they get <laughs> killed. And, but like, th- it is crazy because at one point Optimus says to Sam, thank you so much for saving my life. And I was like, wait, you have a life? Like, you have yeah. life to be saved? Yeah, it's bizarre. They have balls. They fart. Um, uh, uh, like, I mean... They like, can smell. They can smell. I mean, they're, they're, they really are special robots. They're students. mostly I, I, male, again. It, it, you'd be hard to oh, yeah. they're, uh, they're all male. They're well, all male. there I didn't, was I, one purple one, and I thought it might she might be a woman because, she, of course, she was purple, but... In the the big fight scene at the end, she ran up to um, Shia and Megan Fox and said like one line and then got blown up. I think she was. Oh, you woman. know what? That is actually that's Gray Delisle uh, playing Arcy. Um, so yeah, you're right. There is one female character, uh, female yeah, transformer. I just googled, are there female transformers? And that is, um, and Arcy is the one that came up. Okay, one one. Um, One. But the- <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, it's just this movie is just wow. And what? and the other thing I learned is like Megan Fox must at all times be running like a few feet behind someone else and holding their hand. <laughs> <laughs> she really, I mean, like Josh DeMal, did, like, Megan Fox has, has shown herself in this film, in my opinion, to be incredibly capable. You know, not only is she a mechanic. She rides motorcycles. She defeats a fucking robot in Shia's bedroom. But yet when it comes to running, I mean, this movie loves running, loves walking, loves coming in, come jumping out. Everyone's walking in, walking out, falling down, getting up. But uh, she, I mean, she seems incredibly She's capable. She's just got to be guided, even by like the freshman Leo. At one yeah. point, he's guiding her. Yeah. I guess people just wanted to touch he her hand. he seems really scared. And she, not for nothing... And and again, no, this is no shade to Shia, but I believe because of her expertise as a mechanic, she is arguably the most prepared yes. and the most um, capable of the human beings in this movie to understand the potential anatomy or the, what is going on with all of these trucks, cars, and other things. Like, she has yeah, the skill set. Listen, she's trained one of them. Well, when yeah. she says that she's been training him, when? This all this movie happens, arguably, in 36 hours, right? Like, from start to finish. I mean, it is a quick... Now, listen, I also want to just call out quickly a notable performance, and that was of um, Megan's dog in oh. the... Uh, <laughs> in the garage. In the garage. That was, a, I mean, I know I'm a little dog crazy right now, but that was a really cute dog. Yeah. That's a cute dog. Yeah, there was a bunch of cute dogs. And and uh, Julie White and Kevin Dunn, the Witwickies, have two cute dogs that hump each other. I didn't or that like one humps, dogs. One humps them. No. And then there was later a scene in which two robots are humping each other. Yeah, and then the robot and humping like, Megan Fox. That's what it was. Sorry, it was the. Yeah. that's what it was. Not two robots. It was that robot humping Megan Fox. And I was like, did they do the dog thing just so they could have this joke later? I mean, like, was I that? Think, yeah, I think they just need to set up a world where humping is happening. <laughs> yeah, this movie is, I will say this, this movie is, in, in a way that a lot of Michael Bay movies are, incredibly, confusingly horny. Oh, like, horny yeah. in a way that I feel like almost like a teenager wrote, like a... Horniness without understanding, I think. Uh, listen, I was surprised because I thought Optimus Prime was a pretty sexy robot. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't okay. expecting that, but he has a certain sex appeal for sure. More than sure. Megatron. Oh, way more than Megatron. Which one's Megatron? Is Megatron, he like a Decepticon? The bat, he's the big he's bad He's the guy. bad Decepticon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. But also, like, all the students are treating Rain Wilson like he's Indiana Jones. Oh, that's All the female students no are, are, like, wet for Rain Wilson. Crazy. And I'm like, what's happening And by right the way, now? Rain Why Wilson is, this going on? is not giving a performance that is um, cool guy. It's like, it's like a guy he's wearing, wearing a, a scarf. scarf. It's like, a scarf. It's scarf guy. guy. <laughs> scarf guy. And, and then, like... He's flirting with one of his students. And then like a minute later in that scene, he's like, how dare you embarrass me when the dean of students is here? And it's like, wait, 
So you're fine about flirting with your students with the dean, with the dean, but not this other <laughs> thing. Like uh, that, that was, was bizarre to me. And behind its oh, head, yeah. E equals MC squared. That was on the board. <laughs> Boom. That's <laughs> the board pre-written day one. E equals MC squared. It's crazy. Everything in here, there's there's such like it's everything to me feels like even like when um when Shia is having like flashbacks of what he understood from touching the shard, you yeah. know, now he knows the code or whatever. So that's a we have like a you know, beautiful mind, he's writing on the walls, symbols, all this kind of nonsense. It still looks terrible. It's still like it is it is clunky and weird and like all of the all of that stuff it, to get us, everything is in service of getting us to these giant CG monster bat, uh, alien uh, robot battles, rather, that are never worth it. Why right? are these action scenes so boring? I wanted to ask you that because I, they literally. It's because they have screen. no weight to them. Right? They're just massive robots that are, it's, it's so much more focused on the transforming Rather than like they're always in motion, they're always like you know, and like it's like what? Who cares? You know, this is weird. Well, no, to me, the uh, again, I don't, I don't remember the TV show. I never saw the TV show. I think we might have some Transformers in the house, Paul. Well, because of the people who've been oh, okay. berating us into doing this, uh, literally has sent me Transformers toys for the yeah, last. Yeah, but two the years. most exciting thing about them is watching them tra transform. Like, to me, seeing them fight after they're transformed is kind of neither here nor there. Right. That's just a robot fight. Yeah, that's just two robots fighting each other. But to see, like, I wish I had a better understanding, and maybe this was in the first movie, of just, like, what they're up to on a day-to-day, -day, you know? <laughs> Well, they, yeah. <laughs> like, are they, like, going they, out and getting takeout? They go into, when like, they Jersey go to Mike's? the nest base, at one point when they go to the nest base and Josh Dumel is like, and here's where the, this is the hangar where the Autobots hang out and it's just a series of cars. Yeah. And I'm like, when they're not working, they're just sitting I as inactive so. cars? I but yet so. they seem to have such a life. I would think they would transform into their be, like their robot selves so they could hang out and talk that, that's well, so confusing like uh, wouldn't they prefer to be their robot alien selves and then when they had to hide right of course you know in the real world go into their cars yeah well i wonder i mean i was thinking about this too like i do feel like these robots did have personalities because bumblebee clearly has a thing for tom hanks because he references tom hanks clips uh, like four times in the film, like from Forrest Gump and Apollo 13. Like he he only communicates through movie clips. And I believe that is even a real tweak because I the idea with Bumblebee is that he communicates through songs, like the radio station. Like that's his voice. Yeah, because like his fun. vocal thing is broken. Yeah, so now they just kind of like said, oh, fuck it. You'll just communicate in actual dialogue in from other movies, which just pissed me off so much because I love that scene with uh, the the robot who is the girl who was trying to seduce Shia and the, and the radio was doing like, she's a super freak and that all that sort of stuff. Uh, but then why didn't that girl just attack him right there? Why did she have to seduce him? I don't know. Maybe because Bumblebee was there. Oh, uh, maybe. And she knew Bumblebee was Bumblebee maybe. And was like, oh, I'd rather get him alone. When that tale came out of her butt. Oh boy. I did not like that at all. But now, okay. So now that <laughs> they keep this movie, does this thing where they keep introducing new things. So now in this movie, there's a transformer that looks exactly like a human being. Okay, that's new information, right? In this movie, there's a transformer who can teleport. Yeah. That can teleport himself and everybody else who's around him. Yeah. This movie, like there are so many new things that ha they can Voltron now. Now, multiple robots can connect to each other to form a giant mega robot. Like... They just are changing the rules constantly. I, I want to do something that we've never done on this show. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to do it in a fair way. Um, I would like Jason and June for you both to try to succinctly just tell what the plot is of this movie. Like, because I, I don't think I could do it. And I just want to see like what we okay. walked away with. Like if we could just do it quickly. Like, so maybe Jason, you take off your headphones first. Uh, so you can't hear June. Like the audience will get to hear this the first way. And then, uh, and then June. Okay. And then June, I'm going to ask you to try it first, whatever you like. Uh, you'll I, take a shot. Uh, sure. 
All right. Okay, great. so Jason, you can't hear this? Jason can't okay. hear it. Here we go. The plot of this movie. So what's the full title of the movie? I'm just going to ask that. That's my only question. Yes. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Revenge of the Fallen. Okay. So I think, <laughs> I <laughs> think there is something, um, there's some sort of a key to open up these fallen Transformers that have in like this hive formation embedded themselves in this tomb in ancient Egypt. And in order to open that up, um, there's this sort of sphinx there. And Shia's codes have the coordinates to get what, what Shia is seeing with that little piece of whatever that is that he gets in the beginning of the movie. Um, that will lead him to that special tomb area. In that tomb, there's a sphinx, which I think is able to bring back the fallen Transformers to life and give them special powers to rise again. The other thing I think that's happening is the movie is also about how these Transformers and humans are working together to defend Earth. June, that was really good. Really? That was way, yeah, I mean, I, that was better than I could have possibly described it. So, Jason, uh, you have your headphones back on. June did a really good job. I'm going to let her keep her headphones on now. She's not going to interrupt you at all. What is the plot of this movie? Okay, so the the Transformers are from Cybertron. Right. And in the, begin, in the opening scene, we see them arrive on Earth during prehistoric times. And what I, I think, okay, so I think this part of the story is that in order for the Transformers to run, they need, like, Energon, I think it's called, or something <laughs> like that. And they're running out of it on Cybertron. And so they have figured out a way to manufacture Energon, or something like it, is to find planets where they can basically mine it. Uh, and the way they do that is to destroy that planet's sun. They go to that planet, and they they all decide, the, the descendants of Optimus Prime, they're all... They're all the prime transformers. They're like the this. It's a little bit like um, Prometheus in a weird yes, way okay. that I that I was like, oh, we're we're seeing the origin story of these things. And so, so there are I think seven primes, and they agree that they'll only destroy worlds that don't have life. And one of them, the who is named the Fallen, decides he hates Earth. He's on Earth. He hates humanity. He hates, he wants to kill all these people. And so he wants to do something to, he's going to destroy a planet with life. And the other primes sacrifice their own lives to keep him from succeeding in that. So all the other primes die protecting the matrix of leadership and the fallen is cast out. He is like made a pariah. Okay. Cut to present day times. Um, Shia LaBeouf is going to, um, he's going to go to college. He touches the sliver of the shard. Uh, he touches the shard of the all spark, which I remember is the, is the MacGuffin of the first movie, but I can't remember what it was meant to do. Sure. I think it is. It's like the Tesseract. Yeah. Or the, it's the thing that, that they're all after the alien artifact. Um, he touches it and it imbues in his mind how to mine Energon, like what, uh, or how to find the leadership matrix or matrix of leadership or whatever. Like it gives him a map with all these symbols and stuff. Okay. <clears throat> the, the uh, Autobots and the Decepticons are basically on earth because everybody keeps being like, why don't, why don't you just leave? Why don't you just leave? And I think the Decepticons are there because they're continuing to look for uh, a way to unlock the machine that's in the pyramids of Giza. So the Pyramids of Giza, this movie does a lot of, you know what aliens built? Everything old. Right. And you know what we're going to do? Destroy it. Um, Petra, the Pyramids of Giza, like every notable uh, uh, archaeological site from, from that era is de decimated and important in this story. So 
Okay, so, uh, ba, 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 ba. so, okay, so, uh, so they have to, they're trying to find the shard, or they realize once Shia has touched it, they need him so they can extract the information, find the machine, find the matrix of leadership, plug the matrix into the machine, the machine will then destroy the sun, and they will have Energon, which will allow them to reign supreme again. So the fallen will rise is what's happening. Like he is, he, the, the guy who blew it back in prehistoric times will now rule because he is going to find a new source for Energon. Boom. Jason, I'm going to give you $150 million. Make that movie. Uh, but I mean, by the way, that was actually really good. You both, Trump, I could never even get that far with the film. I think I gloss over so heavily in moments. But June, what did you think of that? Well, that was certainly really detailed and I think a much more comprehensive description. I, I um, Jason put some some more language around kind of the this the sort of vibes that I was getting um, that I and I but I didn't really have any background information on these yeah. transformers. Yeah, I think so. you both did a really, a but really I think we, solid job. I think job. we might have said the same thing. I think. I, I believe that you guys were about on the same page. And I think... What's what's a problem with the movie is that the, the tension that is created by the fact that the most important plot line is for the robots. Yes. But the most important, to, the most interesting story to watch is the human beings like sure. all i want is to watch shia megan fox kevin dunn julie white even totoro to a degree i want to watch that movie and if the storytelling made better use of them it would be interesting but the the, the stakes are all inside of the robot cgi plot line which is literally mind-bogglingly boring I, to watch I, I think you just nailed it down because that the robots are so hard to watch. And they're and it's like, and who cares about this backstory? Because you're just hearing things, like just to justify the next thing to blow up. Anyway. And the robots are also confusingly similar. Oh, like, yes. like Brown, it, it yeah. was in the battles, in the because this movie has a lot of Transformers, you know, yeah. of of different sizes. More more. Of you know, this movie gets at animal transformers, you know, the, the, the transformers that are the household appliance transformers like this movie goes there in terms of like really giving you a broader sense of transformers, which I understand on Hasbro's side of it is like, let's sell more toys. Let's sell more toys. Let's sell more toys. But it was deeply confusing to watch and be like, Hey, that transformer robot dog. What does it turn into? <laughs> What does that dog transform into? Does that dog transform into a bike? What is it? Like, I don't understand. Some, what is I mean, why are robots even transforming into dinosaurs? But the, there are people out there that love this movie. We are not necessarily those people, but there are other people out there with a second opinion. It's now time for second opinions. The movie was a piece of shit. Tell me what is the message Maybe that art is subjective I need a second opinion These second opinions are great because this movie is a giant, giant ass blockbuster, all right? Um, Herb writes, I gave this movie five stars even though I watched it only a few minutes of it because I think it's probably a great movie for young kids and I didn't think it was fair to slam it because I didn't like it. And there may be some adults who actually do. Bottom line, if you like Transformers and you have young kids, buy it and enjoy it. Otherwise, skip it. Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Okay>. God. <laughs> um, uh, this person uh, wrote this. Alice McFadder writes, I enjoy watching all the characters. Could be the future. Five stars. Could be the future. Could be the future. How? Todd Hansen writes, um, here's another one I rebought because someone walked off with it and ruined my collection. So I rebought it because I liked it and it completes my collection. Five stars. And it's titled, so I rebought it because I liked it and it completes my collection. That's the title. And then uh, we go to D. Cullen, who writes, lots of action and clever effects. Wish my car could transform. Five stars. What? These are really 
going out. Uh, um, going what out. What would happen if you were inside of one of these Dead. things when it transformed? Dead. You would be crushed. Well, I mean, Bumblebee has to live with that all the time because Shy is inside of him, and he knows in one second that's vehicular manslaughter. Like literally, that's a vehicle killing. Do you think Transformers would be held to like Earth laws? I mean, I think if you know with these. Uh, these fucking pencil pusher politicians the movie, uh, in the movie. It, you you bet it, your it ass. Blew, <laughs> it blew my mind that they showed things like f- American flag draped military caskets mm-hmm. in this movie. Their house, Shia's house blows up and the parents are like, don't worry, insurance will take care of it. See you later. Um, Today, 10 minutes later, Julie White is hilariously stoned playing Frisbee. Talking to other students in the quad and then Shia being embarrassed like, oh, they'll know that sh- She's my mom, which makes no sense. Anyway, here's the final review that I really wanted to throw down to the both of you. It's from Jay Jensen. And Jay Jensen writes in 2009, the plot was more in depth than what people realize. It makes subliminal references to the greatest story ever told. The cube is a reference to the hand of God. The cube can take and give life. The cube shard in the second one represents the apple. It's the forbidden fruit. It is a temptation of all knowledge of an entire species that is too overwhelming even to a human, even someone like Sam. Optimus Prime is a science fiction reference to Jesus. He faces adversity from everyone that he's trusted. He died for Sam's poor decision not to assist him to guiding humanity to the right path, but his followers and Sam realized the errors of their ways and played a key role in the resurrection of the greatest developed science fiction character of all time. Sam is your lost person. He does not have any fixed path to follow, but with the assistance of the Autobots, he was able to see past the errors of his way and stay with the girl he loves and be able to set focused goals. This film also has other great messages embedded in the deep and interwoven plot. For example, respect to the elderly. When it comes to jet fire, he shows how our culture has lost respect uh, for assistance from the elderly. How no matter how old and brittle someone is, they can still be the most valuable person to help you overcome any obstacle. This movie is phenomenal and the special features are cool too. It's in the top 10 of the greatest movies ever made. If anyone says different, do not believe them. When everything (laughs) is said and done, it is a movie based on toys. So, great for that. Five stars, title, fantastic film. Wow. There you go. Wow. I mean, like, that's a real, like, I, I mean, like, looking at it through the religious lens, I mean... Optimus Prime as Jesus Christ is is really interesting. So that I guess that makes the fallen Judas because yes. he betrays yeah. the order, and the rest of the primes are the the rest of the apostles. Yeah, I, I guess. Although here, okay, so here's my question: because they basically say Optimus Prime is a descendant of those original primes, because only a prime right. can kill the fallen which is why they have to resurrect Optimus Prime from death so that he can kill the fallen. We didn't even touch on that. But regardless, it made me think, how do they reproduce? How is well, Optimus that Prime Allspark. a descendant that all, of... I think the Allspark is part of that thing because whenever the Allspark touches anything, it automatically makes them... It, it turns into life. But how... Oh, oh. So, so everything is like think, immaculately oh. conceived around the Allspark, but I think because the Allspark is destroyed, what's left is what's left. So then why is the little Transformer humping Megan Fox leg? Like it, well, it, it, I mean, it, I don't know why that it, Transformer it ascribes, knew it. Yeah. It ascribes a horniness to the Transformers. Well, like, do, here's my question. Here's my question. Do Transformers fuck? Of course. That's what I want well, to know. They've, they've basically mm-hmm. downloaded their consciousness from the internet, as I read it, from uh, somebody who was interviewed <laughs> for this film. So they are able to take on all the attributes of people. For example, the defense when this movie came out about skids and mudflap being incredibly offensive, which they are, was no, no, no. My robot saw a video of Kevin Federline and I'm just doing Kevin Federline. Um, oh, no. Yeah. So, what? But uh, everybody else, uh, including the writers and Shia LaBeouf, have all uh, basically said, we agree. Those are racist. It was weird. Uh, that was not not good. So uh, only uh, that one voice actor was saying that he was doing Kevin Federline. Uh, yeah, no, that, that that like I said, the wall to wall red flags in this movie. Uh, yeah, um, this movie yeah. made uh, the bu- the budget of the movie two hundred million opening weekend one hundred eight million worldwide wow. gross eight hundred and thirty eight million. 
Uh, the top movies of that year were Avatar, Harry Potter, and the Half Blood Prince, and Age, uh, Ice Age, Dawn of the Dinosaurs. This movie came in fourth out of all the movies released in that year, um, and it beat Twilight, New Moon, Fast and Furious, uh, the fourth one, Old Dogs, Underworld, Gamer, Crank High Voltage, and Gooby. Uh, the the tagline of this movie is. Um, only one team will transform your summer. Um, and then this other one was, they have returned to finish what they started. Uh, Jason, June, would you recommend this movie? Would you tell other people to go and sit down and watch it on HBO Max for two and a half hours? I, You know, I really wouldn't just because it's so long. I mean, if any of this piqued your interest, I would certainly scan through for the for all of the Shia family stuff. Right. Um, um, anything with Kevin Dunn and Julie White. I think the college stuff is fun. I really think you can fast forward robot battles, unless it really does it for you. But I found them I found them confusing. I found them geographically confusing. I found them st- how they were staged confusing. I found the look of them to be confusing. Like all of that stuff didn't in- in- I didn't enjoy at all. But uh, like I said, all of the human stuff. I found mostly based on performances, to be honest, very compelling. John Turturro, when he shows up, delightful. Wait, was this number two in the series? Yes, Paul? number what? two. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I don't, and I like I said, I I think I saw one, but I don't remember it. So, and I know John Turturro was in it, but it doesn't. I it didn't help me to have seen that. But he was fun when he showed up. But he, again, he shows up like. And he like he shows up 90 minutes into the movie. He becomes so he becomes the Shia because Shia stops doing the movies and then John is now a big part in them and he's getting crazier and crazier. Oh really? Oh yeah, yeah. He's I mean, this is a tempered performance based on where he goes. Oh, I thought Mark Wahlberg became the Shia. Oh well, well, I mean, yeah, technically, but Mark has never come back to do another one yet, I don't think. Oh, okay. He may I have see, just done one. Or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Mark Wahlberg's in the one with Anthony Hopkins. I can't remember. Uh, I don't know. It, who yeah. it's it's a, it is it is a fever dream of nonsense. It really is. It's too long. I didn't enjoy it. I'm mad I was made to watch it. But, you know, I do. I find Shia LaBeouf, like, ridiculously charismatic to watch on screen. I, I agree. Uh, June, what do you think? Pass or watch? Uh, pass. Pass. <laughs> pass. <laughs> yeah. um, by the way, I will say that uh, if you've not seen Honey Boy with Shia LaBeouf, it's great. Yeah, uh, that's the movie that uh, he recently made. Uh, it was, I think it's it should have been autobiographical. Yeah, it should have been nominated, I think, uh, for more more things. He's in it and uh, yeah, he's great. Um, we, we really, we've said it all. We really have said it all. There's so much. Thank you all uh, for listening to this. Um, but I wanted to give a special shout out to everyone who helped put this together. And I think the first shout out is to M. Bay and Michael Bay, who have spent the last uh, two years of their time uh, corralling this and their want was always kind of pure to do a, a big charity show. So we have all made that possible. Uh, and a big thank you to Molly for figuring out who these people were uh, and getting them here. And we could actually talk to them because it has been very elusive. Uh, I said it earlier in the episode, but uh, our producer, Cody, who had to go on the front line of this, open up these packages every week when we didn't know that these uh or at that point, this one person wasn't incredibly insane. So thank you, Cody, uh, amazing producer, our uh, our brilliant engineer, Devin, who's put this whole thing together. Um, also, Avril Halley for picking all of our films. She does a great job. She's our film picking producer. Uh, and then Nick Kiley for doing all this research and so much research, if you can hear it, uh, for this movie. He did a lot, uh, and I appreciated all of that. Um, everybody at Earwolf, we will see you on our regularly scheduled feed whenever you're listening to this, because I don't know when you're listening to this. So thank you again for donating some money for a really good cause. We're not keeping a single dime of it. Um, We will see you next time. Bye for now.